Hello and welcome to For the Clarity and Closure of the Viewers' Comments. I'm just going to say a few brief things before we begin. Number one, when you choose to comment on my YouTube channel, there are terms and conditions, there are rules that you must follow. It's my house. I expect you to follow the rules. If you don't, your comment probably will not be published. Also, I ask that you be honorable and graceful, i.e. respectful of everyone here. Please don't go around telling people what they should or shouldn't do. And if you come here making claims, making claims about this or that or the third or something that's happened to you or whatever, having to do with grammar or courts or whatever, you better be able to certify your correct sentence structure knowledge because this is a correct sentence structure channel and I am going to call you to the carpet on it if you start making claims about something that you perhaps don't know what you're talking about. It's very important for the safety of the vessel. If you have closure on correct sentence structure, you should be able to provide that proof like that on the spot. So keep that in mind. The energy you bring here, I will return. I will balance it out with rule one, rule equal. So without further ado, let's get to the comments. Welcome, welcome, friends and neighbors on this beautiful day on the internet. I got some coffee going. Ready to dig into some comments. Oh, and happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there. Hope you have a great day. First comment, we're going to get into it right off the bat. We're going to get into... Uh, there's no other way to say it but then to get into an RJG cult follower. This is a fellow, as you can see by the name at the top there, colon space Gregory means of the... Tells me right away, gives me a red flag, lets me know that they don't have closure on the grammar. And this is typical of those types of people that come from that sector. Although they have begun to put their colons close to the first fact if they're going to use a colon, a lot of them still do it the other way. So I guess they're trying to learn, so kudos to them. So let's, let's get into this. They say, Jason, there you go pulling my chain, not your rant against Syntax Learning Center. A compound fact counts as one word. Is that correct? A compound fact. Yes, that is correct. They are positive performance facts connected by hyphens. But if you see in the word learning there, there's a particle of negation. There's an ing modifier. So therefore, as David Wynn Miller used to say, if you place a zero in a multiplication problem, it doesn't matter how many factors are in the multiplication problem. One zero zeroes the whole thing out. This is about the ball at the top of the flag. I have cognition that the ball states that the flag bearer is open for business. Negotiate trade. Yes, that is correct in, in a sense, in that it's open for contract. Open for the military draft. If you go back to those old David Wynn Miller videos, he explicates this very, very well. And... In the video, the, the, the video you're commenting on here, um, oh, actually, it's not the video. This is a post you commented on. But I did do an audit video on that Syntax Learning Center where they slander me. They call me a bad, bad, bad guy. I explain that, and I give a link to David Wood Miller explaining what toppers and finales are. If you put anything on top of a flag, you have modified that flag's constitution. You've negated that contract. So if you put a ball on the top of a 1 by 1.9 grammar flag, it is no longer a grammar flag. If you put a spear on top of it, it's no longer a grammar flag. If you put the ball, it means you're open for military draft or you're open for contract. If you put a spire or a spear, it means you're at war with the people. RJG has used both. Predominantly the spear, which means martial law and at war with the people. But hey, I mean, he's your guy, so I guess you already know that. 
my Marine Corps taught me your Marine Corps. So you own the Marine Corps. That's interesting. Taught me that there was a razor blade, a match, and a 145 caliber ammunition. That's laughable. You should know this, so I wonder why not. <clears throat> what is he saying here? My Marine Corps taught me that there was a razor blade, a match. I have no idea what this guy is talking about. Um, and it is laughable whatever this guy's trying to say, because it definitely has nothing to do with correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. I don't know if that's a veiled threat or, or what that is, but it is laughable. And again, if you look at the bottom there, they say, you should know this. This Gregory individual obviously has not read the terms and conditions of my comments field, and this is common coming from people like this. They're very presumptuous in, ass in, in assuming that they can just come in and say whatever they want without observing the terms and conditions of the vessel of which they are a guest. One of the terms and conditions are stated quite explicitly, do not tell others what they should or shouldn't do. Be respectful. And in other words, have a balance of honor and grace. Don't go tell someone what they should know or they shouldn't know. That's presumption, assumption, and it's condescending. And... I've had about enough of this guy. He's been on my channel, which I don't no idea why he's here. He's definitely not here to learn the grammar because he shows no evidence that he has any knowledge of correct sentence structure at all. Um, so I just have to put him in the category bin of troll. And he's jettisoned. But it was fun while it lasted of the Gregory Donald. Next comment comes from David Linton. And they say, I apologize. We'll start pay more attention to how I use this technology. I use the mic. I don't text so well. Trying to get a few people to start classes. Thank you much. So humbled to hear you say my name. And then, that's why I've come to you for the knowledge. Getting a few more friends. Just start classes. Well, thank you, David Litton, for clarifying um, what you're doing here. You said you don't text so well that you use talk to text, I will keep that in mind and try to remember David Linton uses talk to text and take that into consideration when I read your comments. Because as I've said in the past, correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar necessitates that you're very detail oriented. You're meticulous with laser focus on what you are conveying so that you cut down on all the mistakes that you can so that you present something that is correct. That carries over to the fiction. You know, if you're going to use plain English like you are, I ask that you be as clear and concise as you can. And if you're going to put something down in a comments field, please make sure it's clear. Please proofread it. Because if it's important enough to you to share your thoughts with the public and with me, is it important enough for you to be as correct as you possibly can within the context of plain English? Because if you don't proofread it, there's a lot of little typos that can creep in, especially with autocorrect or, or whatever, or predictive texting. And it ends up not making any sense, and it just shows that you're not paying, giving attention to detail, which is critical in correct sentence structure. So if you're going to be sloppy in plain English, you're probably going to be sloppy with correct sentence structure. If you're going to be meticulous with plain English, you're probably going to be meticulous with correct sentence structure. It's just simple logic. I appreciate you saying that you don't text so well and you use talk to tech, uh, text technology. So I will now, with the balance of honor and grace, keep that in consideration when I read your comments. Now, to move on to the point I wanted to make about what he says here. He says, trying to get a few people to start classes. Um please attend to detail when I talk about workshops. I do one-on-one -on -one workshops. I don't do group workshops. I have done seminars and, and group workshops in the past, and to me, it's just not efficient. Knowledge is finite, just like anything else. And if I have a group of people, five or six people, I've done seminars with up to about 40 to 50 people, no one in that seminar, I walked out of there with closure on grammar. 
or even a rudimentary closure on it. And the reason is, is because I can't look in every single person's eyes to see if they're understanding and cognizing the knowledge that I'm sharing. However, with a one-on-one -on -one workshop, I can look at you through the, the computer, I can see in your eyes, through your gestures and your facial expressions, whether what I'm saying to you is permeating your formatory apparatus or not. And I can adjust my teaching style to <clears throat> accommodate that. So one-on-one -on -one is the way that I do it. So it's wonderful if you're getting a group of people together, but if you're going to do that, each one of them has to contact me individually. And then I would individually vet them with a video consult. I don't do group video consults either. So it's best, you know, because to, to bring it down to, I guess, the most basic level that I can, the most primal level that I can, we're in this alone. Whether you like it or you don't like it, we come into this geometric level playing field alone and we leave alone. There is no depending upon others. I mean, you can. it's great to have help. It's great to have people you can trust. But when it comes down to it, everyone must carry their own water. So therefore, that's why my terms and conditions are that we do one-on-one -on -one workshops, one-on-one -on -one video consults. Because if you can't stand on your own two feet without leaning on other people, then correct sentence structure is probably going to be a huge, huge challenge for you. Thank you for the comment. Next comment comes from Jeff Luis. And they say, if RJG knew banking, he would not need funds from others getting empty promises if any beneficial outcome. Um... I'm not sure I quite understand what Jeff is saying here because you can know banking and still be broke. <laughs> it just depends upon your performances. And the next comment is, RJG took a lot of funds from close friends that never received their remedy or they still lost their property. RJG is a lying, scamming usurper. Well, that last sentence... Um, that is definitely your opinion, Jeff Louise. I'm not a name caller, and I ask that you please refrain uh, from doing that on this channel. So that's why I'm leaving that comment in there to, as an example for others. Also, going back to that Gregory chap who violated the terms and conditions, although he's jettisoned because he's not here to learn the grammar. I'm not jettisoning you. I'm not saying that at all, Jeff. I'm just asking you to please uh, comply with the terms and conditions of the comments field. And if you want to know what those terms and conditions are, if you click on the, the box, the comment box, the rules should come right up for you. Um, it will A pop-up box will appear. So to address what you said there at the beginning, a lot of funds, RJG took a lot of funds from close friends that never received their remedy. Yes, I have heard multiple stories of the same thing. I know a few individuals personally that sent him silver and gold, yet never got a performance out of him. So, yes, that seems to be a common theme um, over the years with RJG. And <clears throat> addendum to that. There are some people that I'm really, I really want to get on my talk show, Continuum Conversations, to discuss these things, to share their stories. But it's, they're very tentative about doing it. And it's just a weird situation because some of them were friends with RJG. All right? They, they were friendly with them. They were friends. They hung out with them and stuff. And over the years, even though, like, like, I can think of one individual in particular, and I know if they're watching this, they're going to know I'm talking about them, but, but no one else is going to know who it is. I got to know this individual a few years ago, and right off the bat, they told me that they had sent RJG uh, a certain amount of uh, precious metals, and RJG never performed on his end of the deal. Didn't do what he agreed to do 
but yet kept the precious metals. But even so, over the years, this guy apologized for RJG. He was like, he's the only hope we have, you know, so who cares if he ripped me off? I'm going to continue to support him. I'm going to continue to make excuses for him. Until recently, like in the past few months, um, this individual has updated his way of thinking and uh, is now open to the idea of coming forward with the, his story. But he's still not there yet. Still, still not uh, near pulling the trigger on doing that. So hopefully I'll get somebody... Um, who's a very good witness on my uh, on my uh, talk show, and we'll get to hear about it. But as of yet, no one has the cojones to come forward. Next comment comes from Mac One Juno, and they say, "Break bulk." I looked up words and get the gist of meaning, but could you clarify your specific usage? Thanks. If you go to this video slander, you will see that I do give a correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar, closure, and what I mean by break bulk. Break bulk just basically means you have a shipment of something, and part of that shipment breaks off and leaves. So in my case, like if I make a contract with someone, and they violate the terms and conditions of the contract, I will break bulk with them. So we were together as a vessel or whatever, a contractual entity, and they did not perform on their end, I break bulk with them. I leave, and they continue on. That's basically what it means, to put it in elementary terms. Thank you for the comment. Also, uh, during an uh, live stream, uh, this fellow, uh, I asked them to share their correct name, and... Uh, for the consideration, because they know my correct name, I ask that they show, share their correct name in the public. For maintenance of rule one, rule equal, they chose not to, which is fine. Um, some people just don't like to do that on the internet for whatever reason. But they did send me an email, and they did share their correct name. And if I remember, if you're if you're listening here, Mac One Juno, I think you also said that we had a consultation at one point. And I looked in my record, I look in my, my log, my ledger, and I don't see any record of me having a consultation with you with your correct under your correct name, which I'm not going to say here to honor uh, your choice to remain behind a nom de guerre. But I don't have any record of us ever doing a consultation with your, you know, under your correct name. So if you could clarify that for me, I'd appreciate it. Because I keep meticulous records. Now, of course, I mean, it's possible that I forgot to write it down. Or maybe it was so long ago, like back in 2018-ish um, or so, that I just didn't. Uh, but I don't, I don't think so, you know, because I do. I keep track of every single individual I ever talk to in a video consult or do a workshop with. Thanks for the comment. Next comment comes from... James Alexander, and they say, It seems to me that emotions are helping to guide these RJG followers. People seem to claim fact without knowing what the facts are. Holding another's word as conclusive proof and defending that individual. I go a little bit further than that, James. You said people seem to claim fact without knowing what the facts are. I would go further and say that people claim opinions and assumptions as facts and that they don't actually know what a fact is. As I've said many, many times, it's a great psychological exercise to articulate on paper the terms and conditions of what a fact is for you. Put down terms and conditions of what constitutes a fact for you across the board. Because in correct sentence structure, one and one is one. One word, one meaning. So once you have a list of things that were credential, a continuance of the evidence, what a fact is for you, then look at all the pertinent subjects or words or concepts or ideas in your construct and see how many of those boxes it ticks. 
And if something ticks all those boxes, now you can participate with it as a fact. If it does not tick all those boxes, it's not a fact. You have to apply that across the board. Okay? So, just for example, if, you know, RJG makes a claim that he disqualified the Supreme Court um, and that it is closed now and you decide to participate with that as a fact and then I tell you that um, some aliens landed in my backyard last night and I got on their little spaceship and sailed off to Cassiopeia and surfed a wave with some six density beings, you, you would then believe me too, wouldn't you? It's the same thing. You see what I'm saying? So make that list of things that credential a fact for you and apply that across the board. And then you'll find out very quickly what a fact actually is. These people remind me of children in a school playground. I hold the ability to ask myself why something operates the way it does. I need not ask someone else for answers if I take the space to look for myself. Hope you are keeping well. Thanks as always. You're welcome. And thank you for the always thoughtful comments and for your membership. Ah, this guy. Uh, a comment from a couple comments from Colin Marcel space colon Lyra, which again, when you're looking at someone who's punctuating their name in a YouTube username field, I can see that this individual does not have closure on the grammar because their name actually reads for the Marcel and then by the Lyra which makes absolutely no sense in the sense of correct sentence structure because it's always cause, concern. Two points with which to draw a straight line. For the facts, whoop, of the facts, then you put your verb in if you're going to make a sentence. If you're just making a title or a name, it would be for the facts, of the facts. For the Jason hyphen Matthew, of the glass. For the Marcel, of the Lyra. Not by the Lyra. So a simple fix, Marcel, would be to take that colon, put it tight up against the L in Marcel, put a space, and then capital L, Lyra, and then period after the A to bring it to a full stop. That's how you would write your correct name, incorrect sentence structure. You're welcome. So their first comment, it says, at equals location. Now, in the context of what I was saying in the video, I was saying that there are four positionals, for, of, with, and by. For is the cause, of is concern, um, with is possessive, by is authority. Where does at fit in there? For is congruent with by, of is congruent with with. Where does at fit in there? And he answers at is location. So now we have what? We have cause, concern, possessive authority, and location. Now you're adding a positional to the mix. So how does location as a function, because if you're saying at is location, just like for is cause, of is concern, with is possessive, by is authority. Now at is location. Where does that fit in the mathematical interface? And when you read it backwards, what is at congruent with? For is congruent with by, of is congruent with, with what? What is at congruent with? So Myra, Mar I'm sorry, Marcel here is saying, that now the basic technology that David Wynn Miller taught, which is for the fact, of the fact, is with the fact, of the fact, with the fact, by the fact, he's now changing that to put at in there. But he doesn't give closure to it. So I'm kind of going, going off the rails here trying to explain to you that there is no positional at and it would not work in the mathematical interface as taught, you know, the the basic rudiments of the grammar mechanics. And David Wynn Miller has explained that many, many times in videos, and I have actually cut out clips, two or three clips of two or three different seminars where he literally gives the basics of correct sentence structure for the fact of the fact is with the fact of the fact with the fact by the fact. And he literally says, 
You wouldn't put an of the next to an of the. You wouldn't put a with the next to a with the. You wouldn't put a, uh, an of the in front of a by the. You must have two positional audio fact phrases in front of the verb, so on and so forth. He really goes into depth on it. And at has no place in that construct. Now, yes, I know. When you look at what David Wynn Miller wrote in his documents, in his book and on his website, he violates his own rules. Why that is, I can't say. I don't know. Okay? But I do know that I drew cross-referencing different videos, that basic mechanic of positional sequencing from his teachings. At is not a correct positional, and if you're going to use it as a positional, you have to be able to credential it and show us how it would be used within the mathematical interface and how it would be read backwards and what positional it is congruent with. Because if you're going to add at to it, then you're going to have to have another positional as well for when you read it backwards. And then the next comment is, quit giving evil your energy, brother. Stay positive and peaceful. Get back to teaching. And again, violating terms and conditions of this channel, telling other people what they should or shouldn't do. Now, to give you a little history on this particular individual, what, what I know of them, what I remember of them, it's the same guy I'm thinking of. This guy was another one of the disqualified people uh, from Russell's construct back in 2019, I think, on the Russell's Federal Postal Court website. He said that this guy is not part of his construct and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I don't know. They must have had a falling out. I don't know if he knows him personally or what it is. But I was looking at this guy, and he's been on my channel off and on over the years. And I have offered him multiple times to contact me and uh, we'll do a video consult. And uh, But he never does. But I'm definitely... I, I'm not going to jettison him just yet. Um, but if he keeps violating the terms and conditions of this vessel construct, and if he refuses to honor the terms and conditions of this vessel construct, he's definitely going to be jettisoned. But I don't think he's a... I don't think he has malicious intent. I just think that perhaps, and this is a guess, I just think that he's kind of one of these people that sort of follows Russell, even though they've had their differences, because they don't have closure on the grammar, i.e. Marcel obviously doesn't have closure on the grammar. And I don't know, it's just a strange sort of pro protagonist-centered morality. Look that one up friends and neighbors. That's what I think anyways. I don't know. It's a guess. I don't know the guy. I just know that he comes on board my vessel every so often to try and tell me what I should or shouldn't do uh, to perform judgments like saying I'm giving evil my energy. But what he doesn't know, or perhaps, uh, okay, it's a guess that he doesn't know this. I'm not telling you what he knows or doesn't know, except I know that he doesn't know the grammar. Good and evil are opinions. All right? I don't participate with either of those things. What I participate with is correctness. And, you know, that's just me. Marcel may be a little different. Next comment comes from M. Wills. And it says, Of the is, of the your authority closure, in the red type on the vowel, with the consonant following, of the full closure, on the principle, with the meaning no. What in the Sam's hell is that? I'll tell you what that is, friends and neighbors. That is a student of RJG. The grammar. Let's read it backwards. Let's have a little fun with this. Of the is, oh wait, sorry. With the is, of the meaning no, off the principle, with the full closure, of the consonant following, off the vowel, out the red type, with the your authority closure, with the is. <clears throat> Survey says, you don't know the grammar, M. Wills. 
First of all, that is not how you write a correct sentence structure question. Every correct sentence structure must start with a cause. All right? And if you're going to make it a question, then you would put the verb in front. You don't need a colon in front of the verb. The verb is thinking. If you remember back, and this ties into what he's going to ask here, or she, I don't know if it's a male or a female, sorry. I don't want to get into any type of gender argument here. When you ask a question, it functions the same way as a vowel in front of a consonant. You're putting the thinking before there's something to think about. Ergo, that's why it's a question. See, with correct sentence structure claims, you need two points with which to draw a straight line and establish the geometric level playing field of communication. So you know where you're going. You know the direction you're going in, and it's correct. For the facts, whoop, of the facts, verb. If you're asking a question, you would take that verb, the thinking, and put it in front before there's something to think about, and then you don't know where the geometric line is. You, don't, you haven't established that. That's why it's a question functions the same way as a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word. Uh, if M. Wills would study this YouTube channel, they might know that, but I'm sure they don't study the channel, I mean. <sighs> of the then how can you what in the heck with the use of the words is of, are, in, on, etc. Well, I tell you exactly how I do that in multiple videos on this channel and wills if you take the time to study it but long story short those words that you mentioned there is of are and I don't use on in or at because those are no contract those are not correct positionals there are only four positionals four of with and by all right so I don't use those but to address for the balance of the honor and the grace is of and are the reason why we use those words and also and and or with the vowel in front of a consonant is because they are not facts. Did you know that, M. Wills? Did you know that is is a verb? It's not a fact. Did you know that and is a conjunction? It's not a fact. Did you know that of is a positional? It's not a fact. We don't use particles of negation in our facts. If you give closure to what is is, which it's a verb, if you give closure to what of is, it's a positional, if you get closure to what and and or are, their conjunctions, you've now put them in a different location, given them a different function. They do not function as facts. That's why you can do that. That's why you can use words with vowels in front of consonants, because they're not facts. I don't know how many times I can say this, but, you know, I guess it's up to M. Wills whether they listen or not. Your comprehension. I think that's a misspelling there. Of the lesson point is with the short fall than correct. <laughs> well, I'd rather fall short than fall long. And buddy, you're falling long. Can you see the principle that you offer is with the more complete workable one when as comprehension knowledge of the single varus multisyllables varus what multisyllable syllabic break function. See, this is why I try to impress upon people that comment on this channel that if you don't know correct sentence structure, as M. Wills quite obviously does not know correct sentence structure, please communicate in plain, simple English as best you can. Don't use a quantum gobbledygook because it just makes it that much harder to comprehend. All right? You, you just purposely... There's no other way to put it. You are purposely trying to be confusing. And if it's your volition to be clear and concise, and if you don't know correct sentence structure, then please use plain, simple English to the best of your knowledge, because this is not clear communication. This is a definitely a fictitious conveyance of grammar. So I'm just going to kind of skip over this. Uh, oh, yeah, I did a live stream where I did uh, a add attention asymmetrical. I did a live stream. Hopefully, I will be um, leaving a link to that up here somewhere over there, if I remember to do that. Ian, you see like the corrections that, oh, okay, now he's going to talk in, or 
Now she, or whatever, is going to talk in plain, simple English. You see, like the corrections that you present to the flag presentation of the learning correctness, there can be continual degree of the correct. Correct is correct. There is no halfway correct. It's you're either correct or you're not correct. One and one is one. I submit here that the more valuable knowledge with the knowing that the learning correct sentence structure is with the statement of a fact claim of the written word. Oh my gosh, here they go again. One of the forensic facts, the contract for the trumping power on the common language legalese. And it is a waste of our time nitpicking. Okay, let me stop you right there. Who's our? Do you have a mouse in your pocket? I am nowhere near you or in any group that you would be a part of. Quite obviously, especially from the way that you're presenting yourself here. Okay? I do not participate with the concept of wasted time. With my position, anyone who claims about, you know, talking about wasting time or being bored or, or whatever, that's just laziness to me. That's my perception. That's my opinion. It's laziness to say something like that. There is never any wasted time because, first of all, time doesn't exist. All right? There's only the continuum. And I am in a continuum, continual condition of state of learning, of cultivating my knowledge. No such thing as wasted time for me. You, obviously, are different. But please don't include me in on anything <laughs> that you're a part of because I definitely have no volition to be a part of it. My correct is more correct than yours is. That is not correct. Correct is correct. And you are not it. As I've just shown. When the bigger issue is that fraud contracts are being conveyed on people that can learn to know better and stop being harmed, harvested, and raped. I agree with that. And so, I would say the biggest, this is as a tutor. Five plus years of tutor, tutoring experience. Hundreds of people all over the earth teaching these things and learning myself about human nature. I would say that the biggest issue with people like this that come from the RJG sector is that they fail to put the work in and spend the time on cultivating humility. Now, this is just a guess. As a tutor, this is what I see. And it starts at the top of the food chain with this RJG guy. Because I have shown multiple times the guy does not use correct grammar. I've shown the errors in the grammar. I've shown how he could fix those errors. Does he fix them? No. What happens? His followers, like this individual, filter into my YouTube comments field and try to come at me with all different angles of trying to make excuses for him. Trying to say, oh, there are different degrees of correctness. Try to say, just ignore these little, you know, incorrect inconsistencies and join together for the greater good. And again, that sounds like someone that's selling something to me. It's a good sales pitch, but uh, I ain't buying I comprehend your problem with the Russell. He has claim on the CSS flag and venue. So you need to learn, stop, and correct. Settle damages on the use of his flag. And that is not correct. Because I do not use his flag. Because M. Wells, if you're going to claim to have a copyright and authority over a correct grammar flag, First, you would have to have a correct grammar contract for that. And as I have shown, there is no correct contract. There are errors all over it. Hundreds of errors in that contract. And it was obtained by force. As shown in the Reno seminars, RJG openly admits to physically assaulting David Windmiller to force him to sign the copyright contract of their construct over to Russell. So number one, it was obtained by force. 
which is an act of war. War negates contract. Number two, the grammar is not correct. There is no correct grammar on that contract. And number three, the basis of this is that they captured the flag. When you capture something, that is an act of war because when you capture something, you're basically obtaining something against someone's will. It wasn't given to you. You took it. That's an act of war. War negates contract. And if you notice, or maybe you don't, he uses a spire on the top of the flag. So that's not a correct sentence structure flag anyways. It's a court-martial flag. It's a military flag. He's at war with the people. By his own admission, in past videos with David Wynn Miller. So I have no problem. I have no problem because I have nothing to do with RJG or his construct or his flag or his quantum gobbledygook. I use correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar. I can certify that. I have certified it. I have almost 600 videos on this channel certifying it. And M. Wills, if you want to have a discussion about it, you can contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. And you can ask me whatever you want. And if you come with the peace, neutrality, rule one, rule equal, and honor and grace, I will answer your questions. And we can talk. Um, all you got to do is email me. You won't. Uh, lodged more than 20 years ago with the United Nations, Pentagon, UPU, etc. Why would someone contract using correct sentence structure with a fictitious entity? Do you know, M. Wills, that in order to, for someone to contract using correct sentence structure, every contract party involved in that must have a live life claim using correct sentence structure and the grammar must be correct? I don't think you realize that. Yet the senior principle is with the stop and correct and the breach of the contract. There is no contract. And of the where is the that contract with the continue movement of the communication for the workability of the commerce, community, well-being, public safety. I really don't know what you're talking about there, uh, he, she, M, M. Wills. But I will say this. Any man or woman can learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, get closure on the grammar, learn the flag mechanics, learn the postal mechanics, learn the banking mechanics, grammar mechanics, flag mechanics, sorry if I repeated a couple of those, and navigate safely through the public using it. I've been doing it for five plus years without having to subordinate myself to any other individual um, on planet Earth. So, and Wills, the offer's on the table. Take it or leave it. Next comment comes from Joseph Brandt, and they say, I don't mind questions that cannot be answered, but I do mind answers that cannot be questioned. Great comment from the member Joseph Brandt. Thank you for your membership, and thank you for that bit of wisdom. Next comment comes from Alex T. LeBray, and they say, Do I need a birth certificate to initiate this process, good man? And they're referring to the claim of the live life. Um, and the answer is no. No, you don't. Another comment from David Litton, and they say, Well, I get what you're trying to say. Something just popped into my mind that if there's that many mistakes, maybe it's not. Russell J. Gould, someone is trying to keep you apart because that divide. I understand the sentiment behind what you're saying there, David Linton. It's just this common, I guess, compulsion of people to make excuses for IJG. They just want to make excuses. Well, if he's wrong or do it, then it's not him that's doing it. It's someone else. No, I don't buy it. It's just like the people that used to hero worship, Colin David Eiffel, Wynn, Colin Miller. I had a guy, I had a student overseas, very intelligent fellow, um, who basically put David up on a pedestal and said he was a genius. David Wynn Miller is a genius. I'm not going to argue that. 
David Miller's a genius. He's a great man, blah, 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 blah. And then when I would point out, well, look at all these mistakes in his book. Well, look at all these mistakes on uh, his website. Well, look at this contradiction in this video. And then you know what this fellow said? He went from saying, David's a genius. David's a great man. He's super intelligent. He went from that to saying, well, David was mind controlled. <laughs> so on one hand, David's a genius. But on the other hand, he's not so much of a genius that he got mind controlled can't have your cake and eat it too so here's one from Apple VR uh, and it was on the post thankfulness to the RGG subordinates actually it's a video and I'm not going to read the comment because this person got jettisoned immediately for using that type of language and this is typical of the type of language that comes out of the mouths of RJG cult followers this is their mentality. As I have found, the way people speak is a direct reflection and correlation to the way their character inside. All right? And this is typical. <laughs> Nobody, right? Well, you did enough to comment, didn't you? So, you must be nobody. Next comment comes from the Learner 1000, and they say, Dear Jason, why did you use the Masonic symbol in your thumbprint? Well, the Learner 1000, first of all, that's not a thumbprint. That is a thumbnail, okay? There, there is no Masonic thim, uh, symbol in my thumbprint. It's not in there, I don't think. And second of all, the reason why I do it is to, quite frankly, get people to comment, to see if someone will comment, because it helps with the algorithm. And the third reason is because Colin David Eiffelman, Colin Miller, the great man who brought this technology to the public, was a self-proclaimed 90 degree Freemason. It's easy. Why? Does that symbol make you feel some sort of way? Next comment comes from someone named Dharma Science. And they are a member, and actually, I can see that they've modified their YouTube name. It used to be Ian, I think, but now they've changed it to Adjective Pronoun Dharma Science. And they say, I'm having trouble finding a video that including two syntax scenarios that is, no, that is longer than 5 or 25 minutes. Would you be willing to include video links when one is mentioned? Would aid in learning from what is available here on YouTube? Number one, it's interesting that... Ian here, and I will call him Ian because that's how I was introduced to him, is communicating using adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble without brackets, knowing what he knows. Um, that is his choice, of course. It's his choice. Um, so here's my answer to this. I'm a one-man show. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and neighbors, I'm the only person that makes these videos. I'm the only person that edits them, so on and so forth. If during the editing process, I come to a point where I mention a video, when I publish it to YouTube, I do try to put a little card up on the top with a link to the pertinent material. But sometimes I forget and sometimes I just miss it. Here are the terms and conditions of this YouTube channel overall. If you are here and you want to learn from the YouTube channel, the sum total of my correct sentence structure knowledge is available to you in almost 600 videos. It's up to you to navigate through it and find the videos. I'm not here to hold anybody's hand to do that. It's a repository of knowledge, a big pot, and you dive in and you navigate your way through it. If you want me, if you want the value of my now space to guide you and navigate you through correct sentence structure knowledge, you would go through the correct channel of my email address and apply for a workshop in the confidential. If you want me to spend my now space helping you, that's how it works. Rule one, rule equal. What you put in is what you get out. But if you're here on this YouTube channel, I'm putting the raw data out there. It's up to you. To figure it out from there it's a basically the rawest form of 
um, do DIY that you can get. So hope that helps, Ian. And thank you for the membership and the comment. And the final comments. Uh, Joseph Brent Russell says, uh, I said, do you know the difference between close and open? He says, both are the same. Both give way to opportunity. It's our mindset that gives way to the path. Isn't our perception 98% reality? Our experiences in life often direct our path as we see the reality through darkened lenses. Yep, I went deep. LOL. Um, I disagree with that. Both are not the same in the sense that if a door is closed, it's different than a door being open. And hopefully Joseph saw uh, in the video that I published why I said, do you know the difference between close and open? And I juxtaposed that with uh, a store being closed or a business being shut down. And what you see there, when a business is shut down, people no longer are coming and going in the building. The lights are off. The door is locked. The windows might be boarded up. There's no sign of life there. It's closed. Or if a business is closed for the day, the open sign turns to closed. The door is locked. You can't get in. And I was using that as an example to certify what open and closed means. When a store is open, you can see people going in and out, customers, employees, whatever. You know it's open. And then I juxtaposed that with the RJG claim that he shut down the Supreme Court. He disqualified it or whatever, and it's closed, which, you know, he closed the court system. It's not true. Because I see people coming and going all the time, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, down at the district court, which is like three minutes away from me. So it's not true. That's what I was getting at there. Um, see reality through darkened lenses. We see reality through darkened lenses. Um, that's not my take on it at all, Joseph. I see, for, good, for better or for worse, I see things through the lens of correct sentence structure. Um, to the best of my knowledge. And that's how I look at things. Uh, but, uh, you know, everybody has a different way of doing it. Thank you very much for the thoughtful comment and for the membership. And then the last comment comes from Sean Daniel, and he says, I hear you, Jason. Like attracts like. Be the change. Ah, I understand and appreciate that sentiment. Be the change. It's sort of the first part of that saying, be the change you want to see in the world. But guess what? Change is modification. Modification is perjury. Be the change you want to see in the world. If you parse the word world, it comes back to man. So as I've said many times in the past, I think it's my position that the only way one can have an, a positive effect on their how can we say, their biosphere and exponentially increase that, you know, radiating outward is to work on themselves, to do things for themselves, to learn the grammar for themselves, work on the man or the woman. And then that positivity will then radiate outward. Once you get the closure on the grammar, once you take it serious and get closure on the grammar and start performing using correctness, using correct grammar in your daily navigations, people will begin to see that. And like you said, like attracts like. And then people that like what you're doing will want you to show them how you're doing it and they'll get interested. And that's just how it works uh, with my perception. Now, it's a slow process. And again, only the 1% of the 1% of the 1% are going to learn this. I got lots of people that talk about, I want to do this, but I don't have the time to do it. I don't have the value to invest in learning it. There's all kinds of reasons why they don't want to do it, which just means they don't want to do it. The ones that truly want to do it will start right now and start learning. Whatever that means for them, whether it's studying this YouTube channel by themselves or whether it's contacting me at my email address and applying for the workshop. But it comes down to it's all up to you. Only you can prevent forest fires. 
See if you can guess what that's from. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm out. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.